Okay, hopefully everyone is starting to check in here. It's Monday. I see we have some thumbs up and some hearts, possibly. There we go, there we go. Okay, so we have, I'm not sure if people are checking in or if these are old ones. Uh, uh, Heather is, oh, it looks like a couple people are checking in. Okay, Heather from Australia. She has a cup of food and half the housework done. Woohoo! <laughs> All right, that, that's in the win column. Definitely. Marcy's checking in. Michelle's here. Excellent from Colorado. What a gorgeous day we had today. Oh, I, I I get nervous when we have gorgeous days because uh, I know winter's coming because it just comes, but you know, it's after, it's it's still warm outside. Uh, Sue from Sully, sunny Melbourne's check in. One of the sisters, Nancy from Illinois, fabulous. Uh, Kim from Arkansas, Pam, you forgot I was on tonight. Well, well I'm glad you made it. Glad you figured out. <laughs> Happy Labor Day from Texas. Thanks, Becky. I had a great Labor Day. Rested, relaxed. It was kind of um chill out day. Uh, Dea's from Delaware. She has half her brain watching me and half the, um, watching Notre Dame football. Well, okay. <laughs> um Pat from Connecticut, Linda from Pennsylvania, uh, Joe Rita's be able to check in. Um, where someone was that not able to make it today, I think Joe Rita, you were not able to make it last time, but you were able to come in this time. So excellent. Oh, Kim got most of her long list. Oh, you should have seen Kim's list on the other group. Oh my goodness gracious, her to do list was gargantuan. Ah, uh, Christine is checking in. I'm going to see you in a week or so. Uh, Pam, yes, you're prepping for that storm in Florida. Ooh, if there's anyone else in Florida, make sure everyone stays safe out there. I see a couple of people from, from Florida are checking in. Carol from Mississippi. There's a lady in pink and black <laughs> behind me. Uh, that's my dress form. I haven't named her. Uh, I, I spent, those of you that might have seen my business page, I took apart Big Bertha behind me, um, gave her a good tune-up, and she's uh, humming along. So, yes, I need to, to do some embroidery on that jacket. Uh, my goal is to put some sort of border design, you know, down the V-neck. And I was thinking about redoing the clasp in the front front some sort of closure there embroidered i don't know so it's it's there until i figure out what to do with her <laughs> mildred's checking in from round rock um bonnie from new york terry from east tennessee sandra from mississippi excellent looks like we got a full crowd showing up here oh i guess you guys want me to talk about stitch artists today that is what um uh, what the uh, is on the plan? Michelle says that would look good. My border design on that jacket. Yeah, I just I, ha I haven't found the perfect design yet. Plus, I have to take apart the jacket because the way that they put it together, the collar is actually a, a line of uh, a seam, so it's actually a band that goes down the front. So I just, I don't know how I'm going to do it. If I pay attention to that and ignore it, I just have to think about it. You know, we all have these projects that we have to think about. And I've been percolating on that for a while because I've had that jacket a while. You know, when you find a nice blank item that's unique, that could be easy to embroider, you just got to percolate on it because it's not like just flopping a fish on it. It also has welt pockets. And that was the other thing I was thinking about. I was thinking if I did something around the border here, would I be able to do something maybe above the pocket, give it some, I don't know, so many projects. Um, Michelle says we can brainstorm when you come down under. Yes, I'm going to be in Australia. And um, a lot of Australians check in today. Leanne, I see you, you checked in uh, from Melbourne area. Um Kim says that <laughs> she does most of her things my way. Yeah, you gotta think about it. Uh, it's some things, some projects are easy, but others, it's like, ah, oh, ah, oh, Sandy's checking in. So anyway, um, I didn't do anything fancy today. Just kind of hung out in my office, did some uh, YouTube videos. For those of you that are subscribed to my channel, I was in the process of uploading, um, 
uh, all the Facebook videos, these live things that we do, because I had to find one on Facebook today. Someone looked, was asking for the live video. And I, even with my stinky internet connection, for me to scroll through all the lives and figure out what they were. So I've been uploading them to my YouTube channel. So I kind of used all my bandwidth today to put them on um, my YouTube channel. I should probably put that link in, in on the comments just so that um, you guys have it. Come in, see. Click Command V. For those of you that, that don't subscribe to my YouTube channel, it's I just posted the link up there. So it's YouTube. And if you go Lisa So Bubbles, all one word, that's my channel. And I put all the face all these Facebook live videos. I've updated the description. So hopefully you could just scroll through and figure out which one does which because I do a different topic all the time. And unfortunately, I don't know if there's a way to search easily because I put in Lisa So Bubbles and birth stats and I got all these weird things. And I think it's because other people um, use tags the way that they're supposed to, or maybe, <laughs> I don't think that's how you should use them. But for some reason, I would think a video done by Lisa So Bubbles on birth stats would be the first thing that popped up when someone typed in a search. Uh, Lisa So Bubbles and Birth Stats. However, <laughs> that is not the case. So I'm trying to, to help organize them so people can scroll through real quickly. So Kathy's checking in. Only one more week before, almost a little bit more than a week, 10 days before we're in Chicago. Woo! Very exciting, very exciting. Day one only has one spot left so then, and then we'll be sold out. And then there's still spots in day two and three if there's anyone who's interested in going to the Chicago event. Oh. But I digress. Today we're going to be talking about stitch artist and how to create a two color motif border. So we're going to be using the motif run, not a fill. So not a box, uh, not a, like a, a filled region, but like a, an outline, like a frame. And you know that we can use motifs. We'll, I'm going to pop on over this software and show you. But sometimes you may want to do something a little decorative. Now, a few things to think about. A motif, we have over 200 of them, and this is done. This can be done in Stitch Artist Level 1. Okay, there's over 220-something motifs, and if you've created your own because you have Stitch Artist 3, you have even more than that. But on the ones, a motif is a little tiny design, usually 10 millimeters or smaller, and it's stitched one right after another. So it's got one here, one here, then one here, then one here. So they go right right next to each other. So that's what a, a mo so in order to put, make it, and there, it's all one color because it just stitches continuously with no jumps in between them. Okay, there's never going to be a jump in between the motifs. That's, that's key to remember. So there's never going to be trimming between motifs because that's not how they work. So in order to have a two color motif, you have to space them out and overlap them so they stagger. So let's head on over to the software and I'll show you what, what, what I mean by that. So let's see if we can do this correctly. Ooh, that was a great face, Lee. So uh, we don't need to see that. Okay, do we have everything here? Yes, let me minus this down. All right, so everyone sees my software here, right? These are some examples of two color motifs that I have, okay? So as you can see, it's the same exact pattern, one right after another, but one is on the outside. We have one is green, one is red. This circle, one is yellow, one is blue, and on the hearts, one is pink and one is purple. So you can do this. Yes, someone's going to ask, can you do this with three colors? Absolutely. You're going to basically do the math <laughs> and work it out. You're, um, but um, we're going to work on two colors today, okay? I like these, these videos that I do here for you are to give you inspiration to go one step further in your software. So I don't need to show you how to do three. Once I show you how to do two, you can go off and do 10 if you want to. Um, I don't know if 10 colors possible, and, and, but I digress. Let's go and see what how we can do these. So the first one, let's just go and start a brand new design page. 
and I'm just going to draw a line with points. Now I'm in Stitch Artist level two, just because that is the more, can you do this in level one? Absolutely. But I'm, mm, I like to work in level two just because in case someone says, Ooh, what does two do that one doesn't, I can pop over. It's in the middle. So we'll be doing this level two. So I'm going to draw with points. I'm just going to draw a straight line, left click, left click, right click to stop straight line. This is my motif. So where it says my, my mouse cursor, it says motif run. When you choose that ill, let's see, I'm going to remove this. The default is to see nothing and you have to add motifs. So when I click on the add button and go to my whoa, mouse is going to misbehave. I have a finicky mouse here and it sometimes misbehaves on the videos here. So let's go to this up here where it says squared ones because these are kind of a little bit easier to uh, pay attention to. So I'm going to choose squared number three and I'm going to click OK. So this has filled a line with motifs and so you see that one right after another. In our properties, your squared motif, it has a height and it has a width and it has a gap. So each one of these little squares, and we're going to zoom in and look at this. Each one of these, this is what's pointing at this from this point, this needle point right here to this needle point right here. Okay. So this left to the right, this is one motif. So when you have this selected, the height, is up and down, the width is back and forth, and you can actually change these values to be bigger or smaller, depending on how, how what, what it is that you want your pattern to be, but you can also change the gap. So if I, let's see, just for ease of sake, I'm gonna change this to six, and I'm gonna change this one to six. So we have two equal numbers, okay, without doing points. If I change my gap in here to six as well, do you see how it puts a space in the middle? That means if I take this line and I go to copy and paste so that I have two of them and I move this one over to where the space is, I can now go to my little color changey thing, click on my color chip, go to my thread palette and let's choose a funky color. There you have a two color motif. <laughs> All of a sudden I get mind blown from Michelle. <laughs> when you when you break down a project into really small bite-sized pieces, you're like, "Oh!" Now, before anyone asks, yes, they're motifs. So there's going to be a connecting line on top. This red line is on top of the green line because it stitches afterwards. If we zoom out, that's the actual size or close to it of our motif. If anyone's paying attention to that little red line in between them, they could have used just a solid color motif. They didn't need a fancy one. Okay. <laughs> That's too close. You don't need to be that picky with that stuff. Oh, Cindy's going home now. Woohoo! <laughs> I know sometimes when you explain and when you break down these things into just little tiny bite sized pieces, oh, just wicked cool. Okay, so this is on a straight line. Now, whoopsie, where'd I go? Don't want to lose this, please. We have these new shapes that are in Stitch Artist that let you draw things like the circles or the squares or anything like that. So let's try a circle with the same type of things. I'm just going to click hold and draw my circle. And I'm going to apply my motif run to it. It remembers what we had before. So it's it still has those same values there. So what I can do with this same thing is go to copy and paste, change the color of this one. Cause if you notice in my object pane, I now have two circles on top of each other. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to change this color to something else. How about this green? Boom. Now if I rotate and I can sort of see the ghosty one in the background. Now this is because my circle is, not a perfect size. 
Okay. It's not, you're going to have to finagle it just a little bit. And what I mean by finagling, you see how this space is a little bit further than the other one because of the size of my circle. So if I were to take this circle itself and let me just like actually select both of these at the same time and make them a little bit larger. Do you see how it kind of fill starting to fill in a little bit nicer on these? You can also change the, the spacing. So if I change this to maybe say five and this one to five and this gap to five, boom. And it will start spacing them equally together. Let me show you. You this has you have to finagle. Okay, that's that is the law. Now, first of all, what I did with this one here, this is squared three, so same thing. It has uh 5.6 with this 5.2. My gap is only two. So I didn't make them, I was playing around with this. And the same thing is with on this guy right here, which is the next one. He's 5.6, 5.2. So my gap isn't the exact size of the motif because this is a circle. And if you notice, some of them are touching a little bit on the bottom. Some are almost touching on the top. It's not going to be perfect because it's got it. Every single motif on it has to be the exact same size. Okay. So you have to choose your motifs wisely when you're going around this circle. Squared ones work, work really well. The dots work nicely, except if you notice they're solid color. So you just have to accept that there's going to be a solid line going across the top. Now, the way I did the heart, if you happen to look at my object pane here, do you see I have actually, whoopsie, my heart is actually made up of four pieces because I broke the heart in two. Now, the reason I did that, let's go over to this side here. I went to my library shapes which is the gear at the top here. This is where you're getting all of those, um, what do you call it? Banners that you got from the In Brilliance uh, Facebook, not Facebook, project blog. So I'm gonna choose my heart and I'm gonna click okay. So here's my heart in my center of my screen. Video is gone. Well, luckily for you that this is recording so you can catch it on the flip side. Now, I have my heart on my screen and I need to break it into two pieces. The reason I want to do that is because if you have a shape that has these, um, the cusps, you know, whether a V point, and you try putting a motif on this, and I'm gonna delete, remove this one and click on add and put the dots on. So that was under the satin-ish, I think. There should be a satiny, circle-y, type-y thingy, possibly. I don't know how big that one is. There we go, satinish four. That's a nice size one. Okay. When you have your, well, the dots actually look okay, but if you can sort of see on this, they overlap really, really close in together. And sometimes the dots actually work <laughs> really well. When I did my other example, they didn't look that great. So sometimes when you go and choose a different motif, let me choose one that's not um, so perfect, like this. Actually, that's actually not too bad either, except that here, see on the top, it, it overlaps a lot. So you're gonna have to make some choices on the motif that you chose. When I was playing with the squared motifs, they did some really wonky things at corners. So the reason I split it up was because I was getting wonky things at corners. Um, the other thing is when I, I also wanted to have it just be solid and solid, do its two shapes separately so I didn't have to worry about it. So let me go and take this artwork again. I'm gonna show you how I break this in piece. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this node here at the bottom, which is the red node. When you have something selected, you see the red node here on the very bottom? That's the op where it's, that's the open close node point. Okay? So when I have that dot selected, I'm going to click on my little open button because that's going to open this. And I'm going to move it just so that you can see. See how it broke that into pieces? 
I'm gonna put it back on top of each other so that they're together. Now at this one right here, I'm gonna select this one and say break at point. What that does is it breaks my object into two. Okay, so I now have this one heart on, on one side and the other heart on the other side. So that allows me to, I think I have more control. I know I have more control. If you end up in a situation where you need more control, I just showed you how to break your object into two so that you have two halves. So I'm basically going to do the same thing that I did before. So I'm going to go and have, have motif. I'm going to go to where it says remove and add my dot back in. That was satinish four, wasn't it? Click OK. I'm going to change the gap in here to be further apart so that I have some my space in there. I'm going to copy and paste it. Copy and paste. So I have my second one. I'm going to change the color of this one. Let's make it a lighter pink here. And I can't, like when I was doing before with the line, I just moved the line back and forth. I really can't do that with this because if I move it up, it separates it. If I move it this way, it moves it out of whack. I, so I can't really do that. So what I have to do is take this little end point here, whoopsie, and move it. Whoopsie. Let's go up with this one. Do you see how it's moving into place? I kind of have to reshape this so that it fits properly. Yes, I see some people have to check in to move later. I need to move my spacing a little bit, probably because 3.2, enter, so that they're a little further apart. And I need to move these guys around just so that I can get my motifs in the way that they're supposed to. Now, when I go back to the first one that I had done here, Oh, I had actually changed them to be really smaller. That's why, why it's working out so much better. My gap was a little larger on it. So let's see. Gap 3.2. Let's do 3.5. Oh, already starting to look better than that. So this one's got to go up. And I'm going to reshape this. Yeah. And I know your refresh is kind of weird on your side. Well, it's kind of weird refreshing on my side as well. And I'm moving, my mouse is misbehaving. I'm moving the wrong ones. <gasps> you see where I'm going with this, guys? I see some people are checking in late. Some people are losing the feed. So I'm sorry about that. This one was 3.7. Let's go back to this one and change this to 3.7. Both numbers needed to be the same in order for them to work out properly. Now, once I had this one done, you see how you have it completely set up here? I just kind of got rid of this guy, selected both of these, went to copy, paste over here, chose to flip it. Oopsie. And now I'm going to move this over. Dee -dee -dee so that they're right in, on top of each other. I clicked off and I said, you know, what would be perfect is if this one was a pink one as opposed to a red one because I just did the copy and paste and flipped it. So I selected this one, select my color chip, went to my palettes, changed this one to pink, click on this one, went back to this one, this one, I think it was this one up here possibly. Boom. <laughs> and now you see one is overlapping the pink on top of this one. That's because these guys, if I want my red one to stitch first, I need to just move this guy up to be here. And now my two red ones stitch and my outlines are on top of each other. My husband is playing computer games. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so that's, hopefully that's not why your internet's, um, um, 
internet that can cause problems. That's I'm, I make I take my husband, kick him off the on Mondays. The internet's mine when I get to do these things. Dea says it would take her a week to do that. Well, this didn't take a week. This we're we're doing it kind of um, on and off. Just it's just it really is playing with it, moving the size. I mean, I, this kind of bugs me at the bottom. I adjust it because now you have something that you can play with and move the nodes around and get it to be. Um, the way that you want it to look. Just remember that when you're working up close with your software, okay, this is a five by seven hoop. So if I zoom out to my hoop, that's not a very big five by seven, which means that's five inches. That's two and a half inches tall in this square. That's only two and a half inches, which is this heart is less than two and a half inches tall. So you don't need to be going so crazy as far as, um, being so perfect in such a small thing. And just to let you know, if you were doing, say, an eight inch heart, it would be a lot easier to match them up because you're working in a much bigger thing and the motifs get to really generate themselves nicely and it works out. Working smaller is sometimes a little bit more difficult, but I just wanted to do it all in one hoop on this page. The last one I wanted to show you is this rectangle. And this was done simply by drawing the lines because I really wanted them to um, have the alternating colors at the corners. Okay, I wanted that to be planned. That is just how I wanted it. This was just drawing straight lines, copy, paste, move, and rotate. You in a sense, once you have your two set up, once I had these two set up the way I wanted, whoopsie, that's this one, and whoopsie, this one. And this one, nope, that's the green, sorry. This one is the top one, this one. Once I had this one set up, copy, paste, move it to the bottom. Once I had, I did another copy, I shrunk it, I did one side, copy, paste, move to the bottom. In fact, I already started grouping these because it was just easier for me to um, copy and paste them while they were selected together. And once you have them all set, you know, your straight lines, it's easy enough to move them, copy, and put them where you want them. And then just make sure that all of your greens stitch out at the first at one time, and then all of your reds or all whatever color it is that you want. Joe Rita says, practice, play, try. Yes, you've already were trying. I think I saw something posted that you had um, started playing with this. This, these are just way too much fun. And Combining them, I did the same exact motif one after another, but you know you can add, you can put in different ones. The key is when you are in your creating the size, whoops, work with, you know, I want one of these selected. The size, the height, the width, making them the same size, working with the same size motifs will make it easier to put them interspaced. You'll just have to do more finagling if you make them different sizes. Possible. Love to see what you guys come up with. And I'm looking to see if there's any other questions. Wendy says, thanks. Peace out. Excellent. Linda says, very cool. Michelle, awesome. Beautiful. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this a little um, fun thing on this Labor Day, real quick and easy. Uh, not much to this. This can be done in Stitch Artist Level 1, just so that you know. You have all the adjustments that you can make all in the Stitch Properties. Remember that once you have created your motif. This is would be great little nice little wreath to put in initials. Do the quick coasters as opposed to having mini designs. The motifs make nice little edgings. Uh, lots of ideas that you can use this for. Yes, lots of fun. That's why we bought this software was to have fun in creating stuff. Uh, just remember to always save your working file. So when you go up here and you go to file, save as, make sure the one, the most important one to save is your working file because that allows you to come back and edit and work on it in the future. 
Okay, because a stitch file, that's what the machine needs. So the stitch file is something that you want to save. So if you want to color sort or whatever it is, that's your stitch file. That goes to the machine. In order to do future editing in the software, you want to save your working file. Now when you do a save or a save as from the top, you're saving both at the same time. That's great. Don't, don't be freaking out. Okay, you just want to make sure that at least one of them that you're saving and that you keep is your BE working file because that lets you go back and edit and, and check things. Because like, I, like you saw when I was going in here and trying to remember what numbers I used, all I have to do is go back into my BE working file, collect, select one of the motifs that I'm looking at and it tells me the size and the space and everything that I'm uh, working on. Excellent. All right. So people love playing with the program. Cindy says, thank you for working today. I love what I do. This is fun. And plus I have Chicago coming up in a couple of weeks. And I know that once I'm in Chicago, I will not be having a live at that time. So I'm kind of making up for it now because I won't be doing it then. Uh, Kim's has to get back to uh, her working Getting back to working miracles on a pair of pants for a girl in a junior ROTC. Oh, fun. We're working miracles. That usually sounds like trying to take in a waistband or put out a waistband or hemming lots. Ugh, working miracles. I, not my idea of a good time. So, uh, yes, try waves. That would be fun. Try all sorts of things. Um, this is just, I'd like to give you guys an idea so that you can play. Um Thank you for taking time from your holiday and spending it with me tonight. As I mentioned, all of my previous ones, or I'm working on it, trying to get them uploaded to YouTube so that we can find them easier. But they've all been recorded, so you can get them at any time from there. Also, if anyone is looking to get the software, I do have a link on my website. My affiliate link is... Um, um, on my website, it's under so-bubbles.com and you slash FB live. That's where I have all of the links to various things. I will put it back here in the comments as always. Uh, my, my education link, all the classes I'm teaching are also listed there. I think, whoopsie, there it is. <laughs> I'm not good at pointing in the, in the mirror, but that's where you can find where the classes are there. Um, there we go. Maria says she only caught the tail end today. We'll watch later for sure. Um, just thinking, get ornament from a true type font and put motifs on them. Sure, you have to digitize the, as long as you digitize the motif, you'll see in my motif list, um, Anything that you, if you have Stitch Artist 3, you can create your own motifs. If you create them from true type fonts, fabulous. Create all the little doohickey type things. But this is using the motif tool. So anything that's listed under your motif list, these are the ones that are built in the program. There's, uh, let's see, gotta go up my mouse. Squared, larger, satin, crust. Oh, and I'm showing, now I, you're looking at me. Crazy, crazy. I'm in the program here. There we go. <laughs> These are the motifs that are built into the program, okay? The satin, oopsie, my arrow keys, squared, motifs, cross-stitch, all these in the list. These are built in. And if you happen to have Stitch Artist 3, you can create your own. Oh, that's that's a lovely one. I have a, a library that just has a few things in there. And these are the ones I've created using Stitch Artist Level 3. If you want to know how to do that, Create your own motifs. You can go to my YouTube channel because one of the lives I did from, oh, a couple months ago was on how to create your own motifs and that has been uploaded. So, ah, excellent, excellent. So this will be, this is something fun to play with. Something very fun. All right, guys, I've got to head on up. It's time for me to cook dinner. My husband's home today. He didn't have to teach class. So I get to cook dinner for us tonight and make sure uh, Daisy ate dinner. Daisy's still in a, she's on uh, antibiotics finishing up. I think we're going to the vet tomorrow. Hopefully she'll feel better tomorrow. So very good. Take care, guys. Have a great evening and see you online. Bye.